Kimani's parliamentary by-election to be held on 18th January. Dewan Negara sets up first caucus. Good evening, I'm Amin Carlos and thanks for joining us. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. The Election Commission, EC, has fixed the date for the by-election for Kibani's parliamentary seat in Sabah on 18 January next year. At a press conference held in Putrajaya today, EC Chairman Dato Azhar Azizan Harun said the nomination for the by-election will be on 4th January. The federal court had on 2nd December upheld the general election court's decision to nullify the victory of Dato Sri Anifa Aman in the Kimani's parliamentary seat in the 14th general election. SPR akan mengadakan satu pelihara yang kecil bagi mengisi kekosongan dalam tempoh 60 hari dari tarikh kekosongan yang dipastikan oleh SPR mulai pada 10 hari bulan Disember 2019 bagi mengisi kekosongan di kerusi Parlimen berkenaan. On 16 August, the Kota Kinabalu General Election Court ruled that Dato Sri Anifa's victory in the Kimani's parliamentary seat at the GE14 was null and void after finding additional ballot papers which could adversely affect the polling results. At the GE14, Dato Sri Anifa, who is former foreign minister, contested on Barisan National ticket and won the seat with a narrow 156 vote majority. On 18 June 2018, a petition was filed to challenge Dato Sri Anifa's victory. The Kimani's by election is the 10th after. After Pakatan Harapan won the GE14 on 9 May 2018, the last by-election was held last month for Tanjung Piai parliamentary seat, Johor. Well, Dewan Negara President Tan Sri S. A. Vignes Warren today announced another milestone in the Malaysian parliament history with the formation of the first Dewan Negara caucus. Well, it said the formation of the caucus was unanimously agreed by the Dewan Negara Select Committee. Tansri Ignis Warren said the formation of this caucus is a result of the proposal made by the Dewan Negara Reform Working Committee to ensure the success of the parliamentary reforms. Sukacita ingin saya memaklumkan bahawa jawatan kuasa pemilih Dewan Negara telah bermesyuarat pada hari Kamis 12 Disember 2019 dan telah sebulat suara bersetuju bagi membentuk sebuah caucus Dewan Negara Seperti mana yang telah dilaporkan melalui kertas Dewan DN2 Palang 2019. Penyata khas jawatan kuasa pemilih Dewan Negara yang telah saya perintahkan untuk dibentang di meja mesyuarat pada hari ini. He said this after the Dewan Negara sitting resumed this morning. The formation is seen as an effort to empower the parliamentary institution as well as to produce sound ideas to assist in the development of the country. Well, the government has no plans to increase the number of submarines to safeguard the country's maritime interests. However, Deputy Defence Minister Liu Chin Tong said cooperation between the Malaysian Armed Forces, or ATM, the Royal Malaysian Air Force, TUDM, and the Royal Malaysian Navy, TLDM, are indispensable in safeguarding the national waters. The Ministry or the Kerajaan tidak ada perancangan untuk tambah kapal selam. Uh, tapi hanya untuk uh, mengekalkan apa yang sedia ada tetapi untuk uh, menjaga dan mengawas mengawasi kawasan luas yang kita ada uh, termasuk di selat Melaka dan juga lautan uh, Cina Selatan uh, dalam kertas putih pertahanan baru-baru dibentang baru-baru ni oleh menteri pertahanan uh, memang kita anggap Malaysia adalah maritime nation with continental roots uh, kita satu negara maritim di mana uh, ATM perlu uh, apa ni lebih join lebih bergabung dari pelbagai perkhidmatan uh, darat uh, laut uh, tentera laut tentera udara perlu lebih join supaya menganggap cabaran dan uh, ancaman dari lautan adalah tugasan kita yang paling penting 
Liu also told the Dewan Negara today that it costs TLDM 100 million ringgit to maintain a submarine. He said this amount covered the operational and logistics support services. Malaysia has two France-made Scorpion submarines named KD Tunku Abdul Rahman and KD Tun Razak. The recruitment of teachers is based on the number of vacancies and the choice of subject options in schools under the Ministry of Education. Deputy Education Minister Tioni Cheng told the Dewan Negara today that teacher recruitment is carried out by the Education Service Commission, or ESC, as the appointment authority. Tio said graduates from public universities who meet their requirements will be called for interviews by ESC based on the number of vacancies and choices of subject options. Bagi graduan pendidikan keluaran daripada Universiti Awam pula, seramai 5,594 graduan telah dipanggil untuk menghadiri sesi temu duga yang telah dilaksanakan pada bulan September hingga bulan Oktober tahun ini untuk menisikan untuk menisi kekosongan pelbagai option di KPM dan keputusan dijangka akan keluar pada bulan Disember tahun ini. Pelantikan bagi calon-calon yang berjaya ini dijangka akan bermula pada bulan Januari 2020 bagi menghadapi sesi persekolahan tahun darapan. According to the ministry's data, as of 31st August, a total of 2,250 bachelor's degree in teaching program PISMP holders from Teachers Education Institutes, IPGs, have passed the ESC's interviews and subsequently placed at schools as of 4th November this year. The Malaysia Future Leaders School MFLS Tier 2 program has trained 27,788 youths in 15 cohort camps and training centers throughout the country so far since it was launched in April. Now, Deputy Youth and Sports Minister Stephen Simsi Kiong said 200 of the best participants will be selected for Tier 3 of the program, which include a training or internship stint locally or overseas. Sim said the participants will undergo training in government-linked and private companies to become strategic partners in the country's growth as well as play an international role. MFLS ini adalah berdasarkan lima elemen utama, yaitu nombor satu kepimpinan yang merangkumi program-program uh, uh, ataupun aktiviti untuk meningkatkan kemahiran dan nilai kepimpinan di kalangan belia. Uh, keduanya pembentukan watak dan jati diri uh, yang merangkumi uh, aktiviti ataupun program tentang pembentukan perwatakan yang positif. Ketiga, kenegaraan. Uh, ini mungkin lebih kepada apa yang uh, saudara Yusmadi tadi bangkitkan iaitu meningkatkan pengetahuan, kesefahaman, uh, pemahaman tentang uh, sistem dan juga keadaan masyarakat negara kita. He said this during the question and answer session at the Dewan Negara today. Replying to a question from Senator Sabani Mat on the low level of financial literacy among youths, Sim also noted that the ministry had approved a proposal to include a financial literacy module in the MFLS program to increase the participants' knowledge in the aspect of credit management in the future. The Rakyat will feel more protected under a government that is committed to justice, efficiency and integrity, all of which have a profound impact on their well-being. Well, according to Professor Dr. Zaid Ahmad from the Faculty of Human Sciences, University Putra Malaysia, UPM, any resident or citizen would definitely choose a group of administrators who can offer good and corrupt free governance. Elaborating further, Professor Dr. Zaid Ahmad said good governance must embody good values in the relationship between the government and the rakyat and it encompasses universal values such as justice, accountability, integrity, efficiency, transparency, responsiveness and inclusivity. He also said that in Islam, good governance values are part of its teaching and a prerequisite for leadership. The professor said this in a media interview ahead of the Kuala Lumpur Summit 2019 to be held from 18 to 21st December. Discussions at the summit to be chaired by Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad will be based on several themes that include good governance and integrity. Among the objectives of the summit is to find new and workable solutions to problems afflicting the Muslim world and improving the state of affairs of Muslims and Muslim nations. The Kuala Lumpur gathering will also seek ways to rebuild the Islamic civilization.
Every household in Sarawak will enjoy free water for the first five ringgit of the monthly domestic water bill, which is equivalent to about 11,300 litres of free water. Now, the state's Ministry of Utilities in a statement will said the free water will take effect from 1st January 2020. The free water initiative was part of the Sarawak government's efforts to subsidize the cost of water and electricity supply for the people to provide an equitable level of basic amenities to all households in Sarawak. This free water program will help reduce the financial burden of the people, especially those in the low-income group B40 who need the assistance most. The statement said it will benefit about 600,000 households with domestic accounts across Sarawak and will cost the Sarawak government about 40 million ringgit per year. The statement also stated that besides subsidizing the cost of water supply, the Sarawak government will also be subsidizing the cost of new electric city connections for low-income urban households. Well, a total of 152 Chinese nationals and a Bangladeshi man detained in an immigration bust on suspected online cheating operations carried out in Sabajaya on 20th November were charged in the Sepang Sessions Court today for immigration offenses. All 130 men and 23 girls aged 19 to 34 were charged with entering the country without valid documents and overstaying. The charges against them were read in Mandarin and Malay by three interpreters from the Immigration Department. In the proceedings before Judge Tengku Shahrizam Tuanla, which lasted for about an hour and a half, all 153 accused pleaded guilty to the charges. Of the total, 102 individuals were charged under Section 6 of Section 3 of the Immigration Act in 1959-63 for failing to produce valid travel documents and the court fined them 5,000 ringgit each. Another 51 were charged under under Section 15, subsection 4 of the same law, for overstaying, and the court imposed a 15,000 ringgit fine each in default of five months' jail. Of the total, 152 accused paid the fine while one person ordered to serve the jail sentence for failing to pay the fine. These individuals were in the second group to appear in court after the first group of 373 of Chinese nationals were charged in the Sessions Court for similar immigration offenses last Friday. On 20th November, the immigration Department raided a six story building in Cyberjaya in connection with an online scam syndicate, where 680 Chinese were detained while more than 100 people escaped. Coming up, import permit exemption for 54 categories of transshipment goods. One milk. Juice. One, two, juice. Bringing you the best of milk and juice. Juice. Vitamins and C and E. Juice. Zero fat within you. Stop sweetie. Juicy milk. The best of two. And News on 2 continues. The Dewan Nagara was informed today that as of 7 November 2018, 60 projects under construction were being reviewed. And speaking on behalf of the Works Ministry, Deputy Minister of Water, Land and Natural Resources, Tunku Zulpuri Shah Raja Puji said the savings on the cost of these 60 projects will only be determined after they have been evaluated. On 31st March, the Finance Ministry have notified that 121 infrastructure projects worth 13.9 billion ringgit, which were awarded through direct negotiations and limited tenders nationwide by the previous government, will be continued with total savings of 805.9 million ringgit. JKR telah mengemukakan senarai projek tangguh sebanyak 38 projek kepada MOF pada 6 Mei 2019. Manakala projek yang dirundingkan semula bermula 7 November 2018 adalah sebanyak 60 projek yang sedang dalam pembinaan. Penyematan kos yang berlaku bagi 60 projek yang telah dirundingkan semula ini hanya akan dapat dikenal pasti setelah semua pengiraan pengurangan harga bagi setiap projek selesai. He was replying to a question from Senator Dr. Yong Wui Chung, who wanted to know the number of projects throughout the country which have been delayed and re-evaluated since the 14th general election. 
Well, the cabinet has agreed to abolish the import permit for 54 categories of items previously required for transshipment abroad. And Transport Minister Anthony Loxiu-Fook today said the majority of the items to be abolished are commodities consisting of raw materials or primary agricultural produce that are brought into Malaysia first before being shipped to another country. Loke said the Customs Department will come out with a new list of items that still requires the approved permit or AP for imports. Jadi hanya barangan-barangan yang terkawal dan barangan-barangan berbahaya seperti senjata, mercun, barangan-barangan uh, uh, dangerous goods itu sahaja yang memerlukan uh, import uh, permit ini. Barangan-barangan uh, komoditi seperti koko, kelapa, air dan sebagainya telah pun dikecualikan. Jadi ini memudahkan uh, aktiviti transshipment dalam pelabuhan negara kita dan menjadikan pelabuhan kita lebih kompetitif. He said previously a total of 74 transshipment items are required to have APs, adding that will still need APs when shipped to Malaysia. He said this after launching a ceremony to mark the record 1 million 20-foot equivalent unit ships that have passed through Johor Port in Pasir Gudang. Present was Johor International Trade Investment and Utility Committee Chairman Jimmy Poa Wi Su and Johor Port Berhad Chairman Dato Sri Cheikh Khalib Mohamed Noor. Logue said that the exemption is expected to take effect in the first quarter of 2020. Well, often Bank Burhan is targeting to grow the cardholder base for both its debit and credit cards by 15% next year. The Group Chief Executive Officer Kamarul Arifin Mohamed Jamil said Afin Bank currently has more than 900,000 debit and credit card holders and aims to break the 1 million milestone next year through various campaigns and initiatives. Commenting further on the matter, Kamarul said these campaigns are among the various initiatives by the bank to strengthen their relationship with customers and to constantly bring added value to customers as part of the bank's progress to become the preferred bank. Uh, Alhamdulillah, tahun lepas kita berkembang lebih kurang 30% dari, uh, daripada, uh, uh, daripada uh, card base kita berbanding dengan industri lebih kurang 5%. So, ini adalah bisnes yang memang kita mahu kembangkan. He said this after presenting prizes to winners of the Scoot Vaganza is back campaign at the federal capital. The campaign, which ran from 16th May to 16th September this year, awarded lucky customers with Vespa scooters and bicycles for their spending with Afin cards. Apart from the Scoot Vaganza is back campaign, Kamarul said the bank is also running an Afin cards usage campaign to reward Afin card members with 2.5 million enriched miles points from 1st November this year until 29th February next year. He added that new card members who had successfully applied for an Afin credit card during the campaign period would gain extra entries. And with that, we conclude this evening's News on 2. Our top story, Kimani's parliamentary by-election to be held on 18th January. If you can, do join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. I'm, I'm in Carlos and from all of us here, stay tuned to TV2 and have a pleasant evening.